Hello everyone, and welcome to part 6 of how to make breakout in Unity. So last time, we got our sounds working for when our ball hits an object and when our block gets destroyed. In this episode, we are going to create a very simple particle system so our block so when our block gets destroyed, it fires out particles in certain directions. So the first thing I want to do is just turn off the um, audio source icons because we don't need them anymore. The way you do that is by going to Gizmos and under audio source, you just click this show, hide, show or hide icon button and those icons will disappear. The reason we do that is because there's you get to a point where you don't really need to remind yourself that you have the audio source attached to certain game objects and it'll just get distracting when we have a bunch of these blocks in the scene and they all have that gizmo or icon attached to them. So now that we got rid of that, we're going to add a component we want to add a special effect for a particle system. Now what a particle system does is allow these particles to fire out of our game object at and you get a lot of control over what you can do with your particles. You can change what their color is when they come out. You can change well, the rate that they come out of, you can change exactly, well, virtually everything. And you can even add 3D collisions to them. But keep in mind, 3D collisions cannot interact with 2D game, with 2D collisions. So it won't really do anything in this. But it's just something you should know. However, since we're just going to keep this pretty basic, we're not really going to worry about most of these features. So, what do we want to do with our particles? Now, we want it so when our ball here collides with our block, our block destro gets destroyed and sends these particles flying. We also want the particles to be about the same color as the block. And that's just to add a special effect. And it'll be cool later on when we have all these other colors because you're going to have like green and purple and yellow particles all around. Now before I get to scripting, I just want to make it so the particles function exactly how I want them to. Because we can get this to emit particles in only one line of code. It's actually that simple. A lot of the stuff you're doing is just tweaking this menu, especially when you're working with basic particles. And the way we're going to test our particles functionality is just by clicking the simulate button, which just plays out the particles, the particle effect. Now what do we want to happen? We definitely don't want it to loop because we just want it to play once and then never see it again. And then we want to have gravity because we want these to fire downward after a certain amount of time. So it doesn't have to be a big number because it's a scale of gravity. So now if I click simulate, as you can see, they hop out. However, there's also this issue of them not coming out of the center of our block. The way we're going to fix this is by going into our child object and just centering it on 0, 0. Now if I were to go into my source and it simulates, as you can see here, it fires out from the center just as we would expect. So just a second run just to show it. So now, there's our particle effect. And since that's done, we can now go into our block controller script. And from here, 
we are going to call the particle system and have it emit a specific number of particles. So I'll just open block controller and let's get to the script. So here we are in our block controller script. Now what we are going to do is, oh, yeah that was just left over from practice. So we're going to use basically the same code as this. We are going to get a component in the parent and that component is the particle system and we are just going to emit particles and in here you can decide how many particles anywhere from 0 to 2 to the power of 31 but 15 is fine so now in here let's just check our Oh, one thing I forgot to do is we do not want to play it on awake because that'll make it so when you start your game, it will immediately start sending out particles. So now in a play zone, let's just shoot our block. As you see, those particles just get shot out. So now that that's done, I want to just apply the changes I made to the prefab. So now in my prefab here, I have my particle system. Another thing I want to do is I just want to change the name of this just to reflect that it is a red block. And now once again I'm going to apply this changes. Hmm. Yeah, just going to delete this and create a new prefab instead. And there we go. Now what I'm going to need to do is just change the prefab for each of the individual colors. And this is where our tags come in handy. Because what we can do is change our tag to red and then go into our child and then change the sprite renderer to the color. So I'll just walk through one of them for you. So just be sure to apply changes on the same sprite or the same prefab and so I copy and paste my red block this one I want to be a green block so what I'm gonna do is give it the appropriate tag which is green and then change the start color to a green and then I'm gonna go into the child and then name it or change the sprite renderer to a green block. And I should also change the name to green block. And since this is a new prefab, I'm going to save this as such. So I made a bit of a mistake when changing the tag. We want the tag of the block itself to match the color. So this tag is going to be green. So then we apply that change and if I were to go create put another one of those prefabs into the scene as you can see here we have our particle system fire and green particles we have our block set to green and we have if I were to click play we have two health for our green blocks which is just what we wanted so I'm gonna go ahead and create the prefabs for every color of block there is so I'll return when I do that. Alright so I have finished creating prefabs for all the colors of the blocks and the reason why I wanted to do that is because now we're getting to the point where we can start creating our levels and these prefabs will make it really easy to make the level we literally just drag them in and place them and I'm not sure if it's possible to stop the um, particle effect from testing every time you open it. Wait a minute. Yeah, not really sure how to do that. So, yeah, now whenever you want to test or create a level, you can just drag and drop the blocks. However, there's one thing we need now. And we need to create a life counter for the HUD. 
that will send you to a game over screen. And I'd like to add some sort of score counter that keeps track of which level you're on and how many of these blocks you destroyed. So, and then when you get to your game over screen or if you complete all the levels, it'll take you to that, sc that screen. And we also still have to get our level system or our um our menu system at the start for playing the game and everything but first now that we have a bunch of these icons on our assets a really important thing to do is stay in the habit of keeping organized and so just create a folder for all your stuff like sounds and your scripts and your prefabs so just do whatever feels logical with your um, components and game objects. So I'll just go through this and organize them. Alright, so now my assets folder is organized so I can just quickly go through these different menus and get the items I need and they're not just cluttering my assets folder. So on that note, that pretty much wraps up what we're doing for this episode. In the next one, we are going to we're going to create the heads up display that will control your life counter, and we're going to have the ball icons representing lives, and we're going to have a scoreboard that increases every time you destroy a block and every time you last a certain amount of time without having your block go below the bottom of the level and it'll so there will just be multiple ways to gain a score and we if we have time we'll make it so you get kicked to a game over menu that displays your final score prompts you if you want to play again or go to your title menu so anyway thank you for watching if you have any questions about this series or suggestions to improve this channel, please let me know. And I hope you stay tuned for the next video. Goodbye.